am Kirsten Stevens, and I'm currently an experience designer at PwC Experience Centre. I've recently finished up working on one of the more rewarding product projects that I've had the opportunity to be a part of, and that included working at BNZ Lean Analytics with Makushla Howell. Hi everyone, and I'm Makushla, and, and at BNZ I have a really interesting job title. I'm an intervention design lead, which is kind of funny because I'm not really a designer. But I do have over 15 years experience as a researcher with a focus on customer experience. And I'm pretty comfortable with numbers. So just to kick off, to make sure we're not rudely using jargon during our talk, we'd like to quickly explain Lean Analytics, or our version of. So Lean Analy Analytics brings together Lean principles, design principles, and customer experience design, sorry, and data and analytics. <clears throat> and that happens in cross-functional teams for two-week projects, or what we call sprints. So lean principles began in startup environments and the purpose, um, the intention of creating value for customers with fewer resources. So the purpose for lean analytics in our project was to use data to, dri to drive where business resource and change should go and specifically customer experience. So I'm a designer and researcher by trade and when it came to all of the numbers on this project, I was not really convinced, I was a little bit unsure, um, sort of ran away from it a little bit. Uh, which brings us to this talk where we went through a lot of learning curves together um, and I was definitely a self-confessed dataphobe. So you may have the question in your mind what a dataphobe and a non-designer are doing talking to you about lean analytics. But that is why lean analytics is so fantastic and it's why I got so excited when I saw it and I just had to be a part of it. Besides, it's a really fun way to work. Um, as Kirsten said, uh, it's about bringing two areas of the business uh, together, so lean data and analytics and customer experience design that tend to work in silos and to one team. And when we were talking about it, it kind of reminded us of Bonoffi pie. You know the one with banana, caramel and cream, it's really delicious and tasty but kind of an unusual combination. Um, it's kind of the same way that I'm, I don't really like bananas unless they're in a Bonoffi pie. I'm not really into data unless I'm thinking about how it impacts or changes human experiences. And I'm way more excited about customer experience design when it's tested and validated through data-based analysis. The same way I don't really like caramel unless it's in a bit offy pie. Caramel on its own, it kind of doesn't really work for me. It doesn't have any structure, okay. oh, it's unbalanced maybe we, its taste. Should we just dial, dial back on the pie thing? Sorry, so I don't really back, like okay. pie. <coughs> Back, back. Okay, so uh, Lean Analytics um, at BNZ is about designing great experiences for customers and staff starting with data. It guides who we design for, helps us understand what the issues are, um, and it also helps us uncover the benefits. Because as much as we'd like to design really cool stuff, it needs to have a commercial outcome. Uh, and this approach works really well because we get really great buy-in from the rest of the organisation from the executive level all the way down. And that's because we clearly link the insights to the customer experience. And people can kind of really get their head around that. And there's a real buzz in the air around this work um, because they can see that we're delivering small changes that add really big benefit. So um, prior to this project, BNZ was wrestling with a really familiar problem that we see in a lot of businesses. They had plenty of data and lots of deep analytics, but not a lot of the insight being generated in those functions was being fed back into the business in a meaningful way. So there was a lot of insight going on, but not a lot of action out of that. So reports and detailed spreadsheets are really important, please don't get me wrong, um, but what they don't do really well is uh, promote the excitement or share the story about the insights that they've captured. And it wasn't just kind of the reports that were hiding the true value of the data in the business, um, but the lack of crossover with other parts of the organisation. Um, without really experiencing the data that the bank had, it was really hard for people to understand and have empathy for how that data could be used to help them solve problems that they were facing. Yep, that's a good point, Kirsten. Uh, we also had the issue we've been talking about where we had a CX function and we had a data and analytics function working in deep verticals and somewhat independent of each other. So our CX designers had brought some really great solutions to the table, but sometimes they'd lacked traction in getting some change within the business because they'd come up against questions like, uh, where is the value? Show me the numbers. And because they weren't necessarily closely linked to that data and insights, that were sometimes difficult questions for them to answer or answer quickly. So this is a perfect opportunity for us to work with PwC to take our data and insights on retention 
and use that insight to make changes to the customer experience in a test and learn environment. If the customer retention improved, we would know that we had been successful. So why customer retention? We all know that the way to grow a business is to recruit new customers and also hold on to the customers that you already have. Um, the advantage, however, of retaining existing ones is that it's more economically viable. Uh, so one way to do that retaining, and I'm sure, in, in my opinion, our opinion, I'm sure many of yours, creating great experiences that make customers feel good. So focusing on retention made sense in, in a way that we could bring the data and the CX together. Okay, so we've given you a bit of background. We know that BNZ wanted to focus on retention and explore how they could do that better. We know that they had heaps of data to play with. Heaps of data. <laughs> and we know that they had um, a really good data analytics function and they had a customer experience expertise as well. What did they actually do? What did we do? Okay, so Kirsten and the PwC uh, team came in and were able to actually start something up really effective really quickly. Uh, they introduced the Lean Analytics Framework, which instills discipline in the way that sprints will run. This was a really quite new way of working for both the analytics function as well as the CX team. And so having PwC partner with us and working with us in a collaborative environment, we were kind of able to adopt this way of working quite quickly. It was also more fun than reading a manual. Fun is always good. Fun is good. So um, the first and most important part of the project was dedicated space. Now space sounds simple and that's because it is, but it was incredibly important to the success of this project. One space where data and design could work alongside each other towards the same outcome. So the project was set up as a lean analytics hub um, and it was a space where consecutive sprints were run through in two week bursts during the five months that PwC was part of the project, we um, helped with seven different sprints and each one focused on a different business problem. Uh, like most organisations, space is in demand. So having this hub, which we nicknamed the bridge, was actually really crucial to the success. It gave us a dedicated working room for the sprint team that enabled key stakeholders to come into that space and be immersed in the work and be involved in the sprint. Um, and actually see those insights as they were coming through and be involved in co-creation design sessions. Um, the other thing that it did is it enabled the team to have um, a visual way through that room of telling the lean analytics story to the rest of the BNZ community. Cool, so how did it actually look? The way that we ran a project followed a structured two week cadence um, and that looked to something like this. So initially we would establish a hypothesis to test then we would look at preparing data and analyzing data and gaining insights from that. Then we would co-design solutions with stakeholders, prototype those solutions, test them, and then um, finally design an intervention to put back into the business to kind of capture everything that we had learned. Now the outcome of having such a set structure for us meant that we worked through challenges proactively. Uh, we changed tack where we needed to, where stuff wasn't working and we highlighted roadblocks um, when they came up really quickly and proactively again to make sure that we kept up the pace that we wanted to achieve. So fast paced in two weeks, you need to be very disciplined. So while we're being agile, we need to be disciplined in the practices, but what does discipline look like? So every morning there's a 9 a.m. stand up with the team where they discuss what's the focus of the day and address any roadblocks. At 4 p.m. there's a data and insights check-in so that the whole team is across the insights as they're coming through and understanding that if there's changes to the direction the sprint is taking, they can see them as they're coming through, which is really important. And then at the end of the first week, we have what's called a pivot point, where the team again comes together to go, OK, based on what the insights are telling us, what is the direction we're going to take in that second week of the sprint? And then finally, there's a retrospective meeting at the end of each sprint uh, where we discuss what are the things that have worked really well and what are the things that we need to change in order to continually evolve and iterate and make the sprints better as we go along. Very true, very important. Another thing worth mentioning on that was that we checked in with stakeholders um, on what we learned along the way and that was to understand if we, there was anything missing of what we'd learned to bring in their knowledge and also understanding if there was a different way that we could analyse data or insights from their knowledge. Absolutely Kirsten, that's actually a really crucial point. So um, bringing stakeholders along the, with us on the journey was actually um, one of the ways that we got really good outcomes. Um, and the way we did this was to include stakeholders in key sessions during that two-week sprint. Um, but also it meant that where you've got a key decision maker, if they're involved in the sprint, then they actually understand the direction that you've taken and why you've taken it. Because what you don't want to get to is a point where you're recommending your intervention, 
And because they haven't been across it, you end up having that intervention never leaving your human-centered, design-thinking, agile space. <laughs> so you're back to all insight, no action. Totally. And that is so what we wanted to avoid with this project. We wanted to actually deliver some stuff. So we're aware that we've kind of thrown a lot of information out there uh, today. And what we'd like to do, you know, if you haven't been a part of the sprint, it can be hard to kind of get your head around. So in order to give you a better idea of what me and Makushla have been through together, we brought along some of the BNZ crew in digital format to share their experiences with, with you and what we did. What I've been really impressed with uh, is the amount of buy-in from the rest of the business. So I mean, we've tried to uh, deliver analytics in the past, which has had kind of mixed success. It's brought the analytics closer to the business, but also the people that work in the analytics. So vice versa, so the, the business can see what the value the analytics can drive and the analytics people could see what the business constraints might be. We had proof of why things could potentially work and why they couldn't. Um, and it was exciting to get that data real, in real time as, as questions were coming up. Being able to use data to make decisions, it's just the way that the, we've ring fenced a team and, and got a focus on an issue has meant that you know, some of that insight and analytics we can actually start to implement, whereas in the past that data and that insight might have been there, but we didn't have the focused area of the different areas of the business that would be involved in actually using and and make you know and actually actioning those insights. Mm -hmm. That's one of the things I think we struggled with in terms of how we work currently is just getting the right people um, all together and also the quick turnaround. Um, I'd like the process, like the way the sprints have been run, um, in terms of trying to get people's to be a bit creative in the drawing stuff and things like that, just some different techniques. So once we get some ideas, we make them into real prototypes and test them with customers in store to get some real feedback on them. I'm the same, I'll, I'll quite often miss emails. Mm -hmm. so many emails in your inbox these days. Uh, so if you had this, this could even say, um, in addition you would have received an email um, regarding preferential rates or something like that because you don't want to have all of that in here and then you go oh I've got my email oh, let's have a look at that now and have a look at what options I've got. Because there's now a focus on it and there are specific questions being asked about retention and how can we uh, test and learn our different uh, based on our different hypotheses then I think that the outcome is kind of just going to be inevitable. Having people come in and help us and get everything up and running rather than presenting a pack and saying this is how you do it makes a, a massive difference. As we get more of the sprints um, through and we start to um, iterate on the initial results and get used to the cadence and the delivery of, of the um, interventions, I think it's going to have a, a, a massive impact, um, not only to retention but to NPS, to the way our customers feel about us to, and the way they speak about us too. All right, so um, we'd like to talk through a real example of a sprint that we did to put some flesh to the bones and kind of demonstrate how this worked in real life. So with the focus on retention, we wanted to better understand a familiar financial services premise. The more products a customer has with the bank, the more likely they are to stay. So this business focus defined our hypothesis and our challenge was to then use the data to, that we had available first to understand if this was true and therefore what action that we could take out of it. Um, and so we started with data. What did BNZ already know about their customers and the next best conversation that the bank could have with them? Now, as we mentioned earlier, we were working with a really experienced um, deep analytics function of the business and they provided us with a really great starting point. It was a, st wow. a statistical model um, which predicted what cus the customer might need next from the bank um, and it was based on things like their behaviour or their demographics. And one of the ways that this model was brought to life was to provide, uh, create conversation starters for frontline staff that they could use while they're having interactions with customers. And it looks something like this. Customer has a likely need for a credit card. So I don't know about y you guys, but it's probably not the most inspiring thing I've ever seen in my life. Um, Maybe not. Yeah, so we got to work. And after identifying the data we'd be using, we defined the metrics that would matter for this project as our kickoff. Because if the metric can't be moved, it doesn't matter. 
And so for this sprint, we focused on the overall metrics, like reducing the number of customers who were leaving the bank that we could have done something about. And staying centred on this uh, metric meant that it helped sort of focus the team in terms of how to find how we analyse the data and more importantly how we measure the success at the end of the sprint. So um, during the data preparation stage, the focus was the data team lo locating, accessing and preparing data sources. What we learned during this process was that there were just inherent time challenges for that. And so the team now ensures that there's a backlog of sprints arranged and they're well defined up front to allow for data sourcing prior to the sprint kicking off. So the analytics members of the team then spend that first week uh, cutting the data in different ways, gaining insight into the hypothesis and then beginning to prove or disprove that hypothesis. So what did the data tell us? Well, we, we discovered pretty quickly and we validated our hypothesis, hypothesis pretty fast and early on. So the more products a customer held with us, the less likely they were to leave the bank. No surprise, really. Not particularly. <coughs> uh, what was more interesting, though, was that we found that there were certain products that were more relevant to customers, or particular customer groups, depending on the life stage they were in. And with that focus, we were then able to think about having the next best conversation with a customer thinking about it from the customer perspective and what was most relevant to them rather than what was most relevant to us. So here are some of the different stages that we identified along a customer's life that we could, ident that we could actually capture. So they might go through tertiary and have limited funds during that time, start planning travel and need to save and maybe settle down with someone and start thinking about buying a home, have an increase in income and want to make a plan with that extra income. And here are some products that BNZ offers which directly correlates with some of the needs at that key life stage. And working in this way ensured that we were capturing and understanding that data so that we could be proactive with customers as their needs changed and give them a great experience at BNZ. Okay, cool. So I like this, I get it, but I want to play devil's advocate here on behalf of the audience. Okay, let's go. All right. So um, we all know customers change. We kind of get that. We do yep. it all the time. And so do the needs of the bank. Yep. So um, this seems a little obvious. Doesn't the bank already know this stuff? Yeah, and actually that's the point. Lean Analytics is about uh, designing to take action on the low-hanging fruit. The advantage of validating the hypothesis with data meant that we knew that there was be we would be able to deliver significant commercial value to the bank. It also meant that we were then starting to shift thinking away from selling just products to focusing on and thinking about what the customer needed from us. Nice, definitely bringing the thoughts back to the customer. And you know, another way to think about this is that if it's obvious, it's validated, and it's easy to implement, then it should be happening in the business. So our approach provided a way to get these quick wins into the market as quickly as possible. Okay, so that's week one wrapped up. Okay, so moving into, second, into the second week is when we start focusing on the design. And an important facilitated session in that week is the co-creation session with key stakeholders. So this is about being getting people to be as creative and thinking as broadly as they can and the way to do the best way to do that is to get people from different parts of the organization with different viewpoints to come up with different solutions. So during the co-design session we focused on conversations that frontline staff were having with customers um, about products and how we could incorporate key customer life stages during that. And we came up with some ideas on what they could be and they looked a bit like this. Customer has an account called tertiary. Sorry, customer has an account called travel and might be needing a credit card. Find out whether this product might help them while they're overseas. Cool. So that was our idea, and we took some of those ideas and we did some qualitative research with frontline staff on whether they would find this useful when talking to their customers because they now had the why about they were why they were recommending a product and whether they could have more relevant conversations with their customers because of it. Um, and from that validation, we built out a service design of what the intervention would look like and how it would roll out into the business with a strong focus on thinking about how we would test and learn in the final stages. So with better contextual conversation starters, we've enabled bankers to have more relevant conversations with their customers, improve our customer experience and increase our revenue overall. Very cool. So since partnering with parts of the business to implement this intervention, we've seen an uplift of 230% in the sell-through rates of these contextual prompts compared to the original ones, so what you saw earlier on. Um, what you can imagine for an organisation of our size is this decent amount of value. Uh, and it's also a great indicator that the design that we uh, came up with was actually effective and, more importantly, we moved the metric, so increased retention. 
In addition to this, we've also had some really positive feedback from frontline staff because they're able to have more natural conversations with customers because they understand where that customer is at and can make more relevant product recommendations um, because of that. All right. Wow. <laughs> That's a lot of information. A lot of information. What do we cover up? Okay, so what let's recap. <laughs> so PwC um, helped us set up a space, provided us with some dedicated people to join up at Data and CX. We ran some specific problems through the space with a sprint structure to find some quick wins that we could put in front of real BNZ customers and learn from them. And one of those ways uh, was about having the next best conversation with customers by using our predicted product recommendations along with those customer life, customer life stages. And we've equipped our frontline staff to have better conversations and make more relevant product recommendations. And overall, that's improved BNZ, BNZ's ability to hold on to the customers that they want to because we move the metrics that matter. So this project has been fantastic. It's been one of my favourite projects I've ever worked on and we've had to learn an awful lot along the way. So Kirsten, tell me, what was one of the big learning things for you? The big learning things. So um, <laughs> it's, it's a real hard question to answer and we did have to kind of break this down into what we were going to go over. But I think the thing that really pops to mind for me is thinking about how we organise the cadence. And it comes back to Heath's point about how you adjust a sprint based on how it's playing out and how it works in real life. So initially we started with the cadence we showed earlier, we were running data and design in parallel, but we quickly learned that data needed to feed into the design and adjusted to lead with the data and insights and feed that into our design process. Uh, now Heath was running one week sprints and we were running two week sprints, but we learned pretty quickly that actually those two week sprints were just a bit too fast for the sprint team and also a bit too fast for the BNZ organisation. So while we wanted to speed up stuff, that was just possibly going a little fast. So we've now adjusted that cadence to run a three week sprint with a pause week when required. So BNZ are now at a point where there is an understanding of what the Lean Analytics team do. Um, the speed at which sprints are run and the team is starting to hear some of that language popping up around the organisation and other teams are looking to start sprints themselves which is a really cool sign of success. And in terms of our Lean Analytics journey, we're now at the point where we're starting to set up another two sprints within, within our hub to start addressing some of the other um, issues or business concerns around, around the organisation. Which is really exciting. It's very cool, very cool. Okay, so I've had my turn. Makushla, what was something that you learned from this process which is really insightful and amazing and exciting? <laughs> okay, so insightful and amazing. Um, so for, um, I think for me it was the importance of telling, um, was telling the story. Um, because that's actually been imperative to our success. It's not just about telling the lean analytics at BNZ story, but also about telling the story within the sprint. Um, because it's about winning stakeholders over and kind of taking them on that journey with you. Um, and it's been important to clearly link the insights to the, um, the solutions design so that the business understands the value that the data and the CX bring. Because, um, to be honest with you, there's nothing better than you seeing a hard nut, data loving senior manager sitting forward in a session, really engaged with what's coming through and actually really understanding and getting the value of CX. Very cool. Um, I'm glad that we discussed this one and I think what's really important here is that this was a completely different way of working for BNZ. Number of methods that were just not common practice, completely unfamiliar for people. Um, and so it's been challenging at times for participants to trust the process. So engagement and integration back into the business is continuous and stories were a great vehicle to move that forward and gain some traction there. So for our project we used um, big posters to share the story of the sprints and thinking creatively about how people could engage with that information helped us avoid creating something that they wouldn't engage with, like another report. No, not another report. No report. No more reports. They were illegal. No. Um, because communicating the value of the sprint is um, how we continue to engage um, people that are a little bit more apathetic or perhaps a little bit sceptic about the way this, this works. And so we, we invest time spending up front before a sprint starts, engaging with people who are going to be involved, um, so communicating what their level of involvement is, and also so that they have an understanding of what our goals are. And it's meant that we get much better buy-in um, from people involved in the sprint, um, they're willing to participate, to, 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 to get involved, but also to share information, which has been really important. So everything that we uncovered during a sprint added an, another chapter to the sprint story and even when we were short on time, which was all the time, all the time. Um, <laughs> we made sure to prioritise thinking about how we take stakeholders on a journey because the story is always cooler when you're a part of it. 
And the last thing that we wanted to highlight is something that we learned from this process, was giving ourselves permission to pivot. Um, not being afraid to stop a sprint in its tracks even. Um, even when it, you know, when it becomes obvious that it's too big um, or there isn't enough data. Um, and equally, having the confidence to pivot if you find the direction isn't where you thought you'd be heading or your stakeholders were expecting a different outcome. Definitely for us, and trust us on this one, um, we got to a better place with a project like this with our focus being fail fast, learning lean, um, and learning quickly from our mistakes. So I guess the moral of the story is that even if you aren't really a designer. And if you think numbers are a bit scary, like me, <coughs> joining the forces of customer experience design and data analytics means achieving more, having heaps of fun, and learning a lot. And I guess it goes to show that when you mash two things together, which might not have always been together before, the results can be pretty cool. Um, yeah, so. Which is why I brought along some pie. Yay! Maybe not enough to share. Sorry. No, sorry. Um, so, Banoffee to be specific. Because some things are just better together. Like banana and caramel. Can I have some of that? Or data <laughs> and CX design. <laughs> it's us. Thanks. Thanks. <laughs> Should have bought two plates. <laughs> Hey, um, so I was wondering, what do you think was the biggest challenge that you had to overcome in terms of getting this project up and running, um, particularly, I'd imagine, from a buy-in perspective as well? Uh, I think getting people in the room was probably like a really um, easy one because, like I said, it was a new idea. It was totally unfamiliar to, um, to the business. And so understanding why they were there, you know, having some lead time into what outcome would be achieved, why that, why that impacted their business solutions um, and their business focus. So, mm -hmm. yeah, um, giving, giving um, stakeholders lead time and then also helping them understand why their time would be useful in the sessions. Because everyone's busy, right? So now you're asking for, oh, well, time over three weeks to do something I don't know anything about and you can't tell me what you're going to give me at the end of it. Oh, we might be on a question record roll right here, Makushla. What are heath, we, we going to hit? Heath, Six? Heath it's on. <laughs> um, how, um, how big is your analytics team? The analytics team or the, the, lean, the lean analytics team? Uh, no, actually, you're, uh, because I think you mentioned you had a wider yep, analytics a team. Wider, there's, yeah, there's about, I think it's about a team of 10 altogether, and a wide how, analytics team. And how many data sources were you using for the, for the data? <sighs> many. <laughs> Fair enough. Many. <laughs> yeah, data was kind of being housed in lots of different databases in different places and yep. different systems. So yeah, it, sometimes it was about spending time pulling all that together into one place. And was that your, uh, the team, the, the wider analytics team? That so no, that, that, that would be the lean analytics team specifically doing that oh, okay. in, in, within the sprint. Yeah, okay, cool. Thanks. So within the sprint is about six. There's three questions for the record, Chris. <clears throat> I, th I know that was three. <laughs> Me first. Oh, that's loud. <laughs> okay, I'm sorry. Yeah, that's your question. Uh, hold it here. You guys rock. Thank, um, you. Thank you. I love the if the metric can't be moved, it doesn't matter. How did you decide these metrics? Can you tell us a little story about picking a few of these unimportant yep. metrics? Yeah, so, that, so that because we've got those stakeholders involved in that sprint right from the beginning, the metrics get decided by the uh, a combination of the lean analytics, analytics team and stakeholders involved. So it's done by a brainstorming and then voting system. So the, the, the metrics aren't made up by us, it's, it's made up from the business so that the, the focus is on what the business sees as being the things that can, that can be moved in that matter. Hi. Um what left the room and PwC left the room? And how did you maintain or keep that momentum up? Yeah, unfortunately they left us too early. <laughs> um, so PwC left after five sprints. We've now gone on to run, um, we're up to now sprint 13. Um, and basically we had to fill in the gap that some of the PwC team um, filled, so some of the data functions. And also um, because we'd spent some time working alongside them in terms of how that discipline works and that cadence, we were then able to take that forward. We have iterated some of the things along the way as well. Um, so yeah, so now we're running solo and about to expand. So, um, so, so cause part of the key for what, what people like PwC bring along is that uh, ability to facilitate and um, and create and help sort of lubricate the gears. Um, was that 
uh, require some new uh, recruitment within VNZ? Uh, there has been some new recruitment, but initially it was actually repurposing people within the organisation who were really interested and excited in this work um, and running it kind of in-house. And so there has been some learning for, for us about how to kind of shift into that facilitation um, and into this way of working. Yeah. Kia ora team, thank, oh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you.